Alright hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today's topic is very exciting for me and that is the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, what I'm going to be buying and why. So you guys have never really been around obviously because you know it's been eight years since the release of the last generation of consoles, the Xbox, PlayStation 2. So I get really excited for new console launches and I am known for always buying the system. Uh, on release date or if not like within the month if I just couldn't get my hands on one like the Xbox 360 I had to buy in December because I just couldn't get my hands on one in November um, because back then there was no pre-ordering you actually had to stand online and I just didn't get online early enough because I had never really expected people to line up like over a day ahead of time uh, however this year the consoles are available for pre-order online, so I don't even have to leave my house to go pick one up, which is a bit disappointing because I really enjoy that sort of atmosphere of waiting outside in the freezing cold in December and November, waiting for these systems for over 24 hours. I did that for the Wii, 24 hours in line. Uh, that's the longest I waited in line for a console. Uh, and if you want to see me waiting in the cold for a console, I have a video up on my channel. I don't remember what I called it, but if, I'm sure if you search 3DS, you can see me waiting outside in the freezing cold to get a 3DS in New York City. But anyway, getting off topic here. Um, I'll just come right out and say I will be buying both the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. Very excited for both. Uh, I ordered both online through Amazon, so they're just going to show up at my house. Kind of boring in a way, but hey, it's kind of convenient. And the reason why I'm buying both of them, for those of you that don't listen to my podcast that I'm on as a co-host, the Old Gen Gamers, I've mentioned on there multiple times, you know, why I'm buying both, and I have a pretty strong opinion, and I kind of stand by it, because, you know, the Xbox One, a lot of people are giving it sort of like a lot of just bad-mouthing it, like, oh man, this thing is trash, like it's garbage, get it out of here, it's like, people, at least for me, I could care less about, like, some of the things they announced for it, yeah, we're kind of, you know, what were they thinking? Like, oh, you can't play, use games anymore. Like, yeah, yeah, okay. But when it comes down to it, I, they've reversed a lot of the things they said. And I'm not here to go talking about the mistakes that Microsoft made and how they corrected it with the Xbox One. The damage is already done. Unfortunate for them. Um, I'm here to talk about games. And you know why I'm buying both systems? It's because I like to play games. And I don't care what the company is, what they come out and say before the console comes out. When it comes down to it, there are games coming out for this system, now or down the line, that I, as a gamer, really want to play. And I'm just one of those people where I get caught up in console launches, I get really excited, I, I like to have these things on day one, and, you know, experience them as they come out, you know, be part of the moment of history of gaming, you know. You, you can't go back in time and say, oh man, you know, I bought the PS4 uh, a year or two after it came out. I wish I had it like the day it first came out. Like, I just, I don't want regrets like that. I want this thing in my house, day one, just that adrenaline rush that you get when you get that box in the mail and you hook it up and you play those brand new games. You know, of, of course, some of the games might not be the greatest, um, but when it comes down to it, I'm playing a new console. And that is why I'm buying both systems, because I want to play the games that are on both of them. Um, for the PlayStation 4, I have to say I'm a, well, strangely enough, I'm more excited for the system of PlayStation 4 than the Xbox One, but in recent events, I'm actually more excited for some of the games that are coming out on Xbox One than the PlayStation 4, because uh, I'm sure a lot of you know that a couple of games got delayed on the PlayStation 4, um, namely Drive Club, which I was really looking forward to. I always like to have a driving game for, you know, a new console launch. It's always a good sort of benchmark to show off graphics, and I, I kind of enjoy racing games. Um, and Watch Dogs was delayed, which of course was coming out on both systems, but I was going to buy it on PS4 first, because that system's coming out first. Um, so both of those games are delayed. So right now for the PlayStation 4, when it comes to physical games, I haven't really looked into digital games too much. Physical games, the only games I will be getting on launch day. The definites are Killzone, um, Shadowfall, Knack, which is, you know, the platformer. Um, hoping that's going to be good. I've heard it's not, not so great things on that game so far. And uh, to replace Drive Club as my racing game, I'm going to pick up uh, Need for Speed Rivals. Uh, I do enjoy the re Need for Speed games. I haven't played uh, quite a few of the more recent entries in the series, but I was a huge fan of Most Wanted uh, when that came out for the launch of the Xbox 360. At least, yeah, it was Most Wanted. Yeah, Need for Speed Most Wanted was, I think, the name of it. 
Really enjoyed that. I love arcade racers, so that will be my replacement. Uh, the games that are on the fence for me, like mm, that's a maybe uh, right now, would be Assassin's Creed 4, and I think that's really the only one where I'm sort of like up in the air whether or not I'll pick it up. It'll all come down to like if I if I can afford it, because let's face it, people, there's two new consoles coming out within one week of one another. There's multiple games I want for both. Money is going to be tight, especially just getting back from Japan and having like a shopping spree there for games. Um, I have to be a bit selective in what I pick up, but I, I want to do my best to get, you know, those core essential titles. So that about does it for the PlayStation 4. Uh, the bundle I have pre-ordered is the one with Killzone and one year of PlayStation Plus, because if you don't know, PlayStation Plus is required now to play online, which is fine by me, because I've always wanted the service, but I can never justify paying for games that I don't officially own, because once the service ends, you lose access to all those games. So, if this means that the PlayStation 4 is going to have better online access than it did in the past, I'm all for it. You know, I'm really looking forward to the Twitch feature, so, you know, when I get my PlayStation 4, feel free to watch me play games on Twitch on my PlayStation 4 or your PlayStation 4. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Um, getting on to the Xbox One. I'm picking up the Xbox One, as I explained. Uh, and there's actually more games on there than I'm excited for than the PlayStation 4 launch, uh, which surprised me. But that has something to do with the delays of PlayStation 4 games. Um, the most, the game I'm most excited for right now is Crimson Dragon, which is the spiritual, not sequel, it's sort of like a spiritual successor to the Panzer Dragoon series. And I played this back at like two PAXs ago or something like that, PAX Prime. Um, and it was using the Kinect, and it was god-awful. I asked the rep, I'm like, man, is, are they going to have controls for this game? Like, real controls? He's like, nah, it's Kinect. The controls are terrible. Uh, thankfully, this game was delayed to a launch title for the Xbox One where you can use a controller. It has online. It looks really good. I love the Panzer Dragoon series, so I'm like, very excited for that. It's a download game. It's not going to be physical from what I know, so just download only. Um, I'm also really excited. Most of the games I'm most excited for... Or download games, uh, but Loco Cycle, it's the next game from Twisted Pixel, which I have to say I'm a pretty big fan of their games, especially uh, The Maw. I love The Maw. Uh, that's going to be sort of like this really wacky racing ar arcade game. I don't know too much about it. I really want to be surprised on day one, so I haven't looked too much into it. That's another download game, uh, rumored to be coming to current generation Xbox 360, and I don't know if it's PS3 as well, but at least 360. Um, Dead Rising. Uh, three. I, I probably will pick that up. Um, I have not played Dead Rising 2, but I enjoyed Des Dead Rising 1, and this game looks like it's a sort of one of those games you pick it up for not just the gameplay, but to show off the technical like power of the Xbox One, because supposedly 500 to 1,000 zombies on screen with no slowdown are the recent reports, so that should probably show like this is next gen. This was not possible on you know the Xbox 360 or PS3. This is why you need a new console. So I'm hoping Dead Rising can deliver. Uh, I will be buying Killer Instinct. I haven't decided what I'm going to do exactly, if I'm going to buy the physical version that comes with like the collector's edition pins and all that garbage. I don't know. I, I'm just, I need the box. Like I just need that plastic box that says, you own this, sort of. Uh, for those that don't know, Killer Instinct is going to be free to play. Uh, download only, essentially. You can't go to the stores and get a disc version. Um, but the collector's editions will come with various things. Uh, you unlock characters by paying money, so the free version will have a free character. Uh, Jago is the first free character that you can play as, so expect to see a lot of Jagos online. Word is, this game looks really good next-gen, so once again, another game that's going to show off the power of what you know next-generation consoles can do, and I'm really excited for that. Um, Forza Motorsport 5, uh, I will pick that up. I have to say... <laughs> I really don't have much experience with the Forza Motorsport series, but once again, I'm a sucker for racing games when it comes to new console launches, and I assume that the Forza series will deliver on next-generation graphics. And that's going to be the only game where maybe Need for Speed will hold me over on the PS4 and I might put that off on the Xbox One. I'm really not too sure. <laughs> I'll have to see how it goes. But uh, other than that, yeah, I, I don't think there's really anything else exclusive on the Xbox One. Maybe there's some digital games I don't know about yet so that I might have to check out. Uh, physical games, I'm going to pass on Battlefield 4 because I'll buy that on the PC. Uh, Call of Duty Ghosts, I don't know. I'll have to see what the word is on the street, but I think I'm kind of done with the Call of Duty series. Uh, other than that, mm, the camera for the PS4, uh, probably, I don't know if I'm going to need that. Uh, Xbox, I don't think there's really anything extra that I really need for it. 
Uh, thankfully, Sony is putting headsets in with the box for the PS4 this time. I'm almost certain they are. I remember reading that a while ago. But other than that, that's basically what I'm buying. Uh, like I said, guys, I'm very excited for the new console launch here. Sorry it's taken me quite a bit to get my opinions out there to some of you on what I thought of these consoles. But to be honest, I, uh, I kind of want to wait until I have them in my hands. I've experienced the user interface. I don't want to get online like what happened with the, you know, the Xbox One where everybody got online. They started raging about what happened. And then a week or two later, everything's changed. So everything they had said in the past is sort of like nullified. But in a way, if you think about it, maybe the big uprise of all these people making videos and tweeting made Microsoft think, wait, let's go back <laughs> in time, reverse, change everything we said. So in a way, it was good that everybody got online and sort of ranted and spoke their mind because in the end, that's definitely what changed Microsoft's opinion. Uh, I just am not the kind of person to, uh, I just didn't feel like getting online and, and bad mouthing, you know, that Microsoft and sort of like rooting for the PlayStation 4 because I always, I have hope, you know, uh, I'm excited for competition. If we just had the PlayStation 4 in our lives and Nintendo, that would be kind of boring. Like I love to have this competition between these two consoles and it's a lot of fun. It, it was so much fun to watch in those weeks during, you know, E3 and everything and leading up to E3. The battles that Sony and Microsoft are having, like it's callbacks to, you know, Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo and, you know, even PlayStation 2 and Xbox to some extent, but it's it's fun to have that that rivalry between companies for new console launches. There really hasn't been anything like this in some time. When you have people in a crowd cheering for having to pay money to go online when they previously did not, it's an interesting time. Well, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you're as excited as I am. Feel free to leave a comment below with what systems you plan on picking up, what games you plan on getting. I'd be interested to know. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching.